All right. <clears throat> Today is Friday, April 26, 2013. My name is David Favor. I'm doing a uh, site review for um, Ezra Firestone for her his uh, wife Carrie's site, um, which is a really cool name. This little piggy had roast beets, uh, which is a, a vegan recipes and cooking. Hmm. Uh, all right. So this is a summary video. There was an hour-long uh, detail video that I'll um, tack on the end of this. The summary video, I'm just going to go through the um, uh, the <clears throat> 10 things I found uh, Ezra can fix to get his uh, uh, site time down. So let's take a quick look at the current site load time, which is uh, really ugly. Um, Let's go look at the summary here. <clears throat> so, for the berry domain, this little piggy had roastbeats.com, we're going to look at the speed for that. And then we're also going to look at the site speed for www, this little piggy had roastbeats.com. Most people don't realize those are two completely different beasts. Um, <clears throat> so, real quickly, all you really require to know about this um, screen here is this. Number one, you should have A scores here on everything except CDN. That should be X. Uh, you should never use a CDN. Uh, CDNs work great for people whose website speed sucks and they will um, remediate those problems. So remediation is um, like I um, have worked in the health industry for years, ran a client practice, and now manufacture a line of superfoods. And remediation means that you're putting a band-aid over a problem. So, for example, um, liposuction or lap band surgery would be remediation for somebody who can't control what they put in their mouth. So, um, it, it's a way to uh, brute force fix a problem uh, at the symptom level instead of the root cause level. So what we're going to talk about here is how to fix symptom level problems and using a CDN or a root cause level problems. So CDNs address the symptom of a slow site and if a person has a slow site CDNs will make a huge difference and better to spend your money and time because once you go down the CDN rabbit hole it's like using windows. You'll always be wrestling with um, you know suck hours out of your days sometime which is why I just use Mac and Linux because it takes zero effort on my part. Um, so CDNs, you should see an X there. For God's sake, don't use one. If you are using one, uh, you can get in touch with me and I can help you unwind from that because it ain't a simple process. Mm. Similar to getting off heroin. Um, all right, so the next thing is you should have all A's here. Um, looking at the... Um, um, the uh, bear domain, there's a D for compress images, and you can look here and it shows how to fix that. So um, easy fixes for this site uh, will be, uh, I guess I'll make another summary list, is to compress existing images, which was one I didn't have on my list. Um, <clears throat> the next thing to fix, which is absolute which must be fixed. Well first off your goal here is for your first view to be less than a second and repeat view to be less than a second and when we get through um, we'll get really close. If we look at the um, <clears throat> if we look at the um, www version uh, this first view time here is incorrect because if we look at the the detail view here we see a bunch of these requests were canceled. See all these requests were canceled uh, for some reason. I'm unsure exactly why that is, but what we're really looking for is this top number here, which says how long does it take to do a redirect from www this little piggy to this little piggy. In other words, to go from the www uh, subdomain or host to the bear domain. And this is really ugly. 4.8 seconds. That ain't milliseconds, that's 4,800 milliseconds. So that means that if the bear domain is loading at 8.75 and a person happens to type in www, 
they're going to get almost an additional five seconds before they see the first part of that page. And rule of thumb is um, sub-second uh, access time because people's attention spans are so low that if you, if you make them wait 11 seconds, you're going to lose tremendous amounts of traffic and um, uh, then the sales that go along with that. Uh, the way to fix this, uh, I brought up a copy of my uh, website, um, uh, my Apache configuration file. And so there are a couple of ways. Most people do uh, 301 redirects to go from www to a bare domain in their what's called their HT access file. And your geek of the realm, whoever's doing your tech work, ought to know what all this is. So if you don't, no, don't worry about it. Just pass it along to them. If you use an HT access file, that means the web server has to go find that file, read the file into memory, compile all of the redirects. Those get recompiled every single access. And that can be extremely slow if you're using WordPress and a bunch of uh, redirect logic. I put it here in my server, and this is why, um, uh, let's see, if I bring up, um, oops. Webpagetest.org. So I'm testing my, um, oh, actually, that's, um, that ain't going to work. Uh, what I'm looking for is the www. I'll, I'll, uh, I guess I'll just save that maybe for using later. But really what I'm doing is looking for the www. So in this case, uh, Ezra's site is taking uh, 4,800 milliseconds to do the redirect. And on my site, oh good, so, um, well, it's still saying request canceled. Something's not working quite right. Anyway, um, on my site, um, and this will vary from access to access time, but on my site, uh, this access, it took... Uh, uh, 150 milliseconds to redirect from www to my bare domain. So uh, con converse that with um, 4800 versus 164 milliseconds. So the difference between 0 .1 point, 0 0.164 seconds to 4.8 seconds. Huge difference. So the next big win is to fix the www to bare domain redirect. And by putting the redirect, so here's the redirect logic here is, um, it says server name www.davidfavor.com. Whenever there is an access to www, this redirect here says, redirect the the dash means anything to David's favor the bear domain so by putting this um, in the uh, domain configuration file inside the web server the redirects don't have to do any of that uh, looking looking up a file compiling all the file contents in the HT access and then doing the redirect which can take huge amounts of time now another problem may be uh, Ezra's DNS setup. I'm unsure, uh, but that would be something um, uh, to check uh, DNS uh, response time. So in other words, if, if uh, Ezra, if you do this, if you change this redirect and the uh, redirect time only drops a minuscule amount, like in other words, it goes from like you know, five seconds to four and a half seconds, that, that points to a DNS problem. All right, so now we can uh, let's, uh, minimize this and let's look a little bit deeper here. <clears throat> so the next thing that will give... Um,
the next big win is to remove, uh, if you look at this, if you just look, step back and look at the whole graph here, you'll see those big red lines. Though the, the big red lines, the big yellow lines, and the big green lines, any, any long line we're going to get rid of. Um, boy, there's time to first bite. Wow, eight seconds. Okay, so the, the whole point here is we got to get rid of all these uh, images or all these um, um, anything that's taken a long time. So any place there's a long line here has got to go. And if you just, Ezra, if you just get rid of the red lines, these uh, this vegan recipes dot JSON, whatever the heck that is, um, it's probably some sort of uh, access mechanism for Twitter. And dude, right now it's freaking broken, which means um, that file accessing that it's not really a file. A better way to say it is that object accessing that object, which probably is meant to be a file, is. Um, <clears throat> Uh, taking you know, the 404 means that it's just completely broken, uh, which means it'll never come back. And so it's blocking, it's just sucking time out of the first session and also the subsequent sessions, as I recall. Let's see here. Yep. So you got to get rid of these. And so the, the, the easy fix is you uh, log into your web server with SSH. And you type, you go to your uh, WordPress um, folder where all your WordPress files are, and at the command line you say touch space uh, vegan recipes dot JSON carriage return, and that will create a zero length file for this uh, vegan recipes dot JSON object, whatever the heck that is. Um, so fix. That's number four here is fix vegan recipes dot JSON. So the touch command will basically create a zero length file so that uh, it'll return instantly. And then the real fix though is um, you know first you touch the file and that that gets rid of that long access, but you've still got this random access that's useless. So then the next fix is to um, go in and strip. <clears throat> all references to that vegan recipes.json file out of wherever they're being referenced uh, or fix that some way. Um, I don't know exactly what that is. Um, it looks to be like some sort of mechanism to access a Twitter feed, which is going to be very problematic because that means anytime the Twitter feeds down, your whole entire freaking website is going to stop waiting on the, this um, brokenness to... Um, uh, resolve by way of a timeout. A timeout means that uh, you know after a certain amount of time the web server or the client, the browser that you're using like Chrome or Firefox will say, oh, I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna break that connection and maybe try it again later, which is what it looks like here. So this connection uh, to the thir this 13th connection that um, webpagetest.org made as it went on and went on here and looks like it timed out probably around 10 seconds. And then the software went through and accessed some other objects and then at uh, the item 31 here is it tried to get that object again and it still couldn't get it because it's never going to be there. And notice all these images here blocked. In other words, they're waiting on this object. So if you look, this time here is about one second this time here is about two and a half seconds. So let's see. I guess that's about one and a half. And around two. So about three and a half seconds. If you just get rid of, if you just do the touch zero, you'll get your site um, uh, serving speed down to around four seconds. If you strip this, you'll get it down to about three and a half seconds just by doing that one thing. Now the other thing to check here is um, what the heck this thing is. I don't know what this file here is, 
but it's got to be fixed. Let's see if I can actually um, access that and see what it is. So here's a little trick. I'm going to bring up a web browser here and see if I can actually put that cache object in and look at it. Oh, okay, so J, jQuery. Hmm. Why in the world it's taken that long to serve the jQuery file? I am unsure, but anyway, um, um, I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to test uh, the jQuery access on my site and see what that time comes out to be. All right, <clears throat> I took five minutes and went and found a copy of um, uh, jQuery. Uh, 1.8.3 so I'm comparing apples and apples here and I've got a minified version which is exactly what we saw there um, when we brought up that file on our screen so the question then is what the heck is taking uh, 70 well 71 7.2 seconds just to start serving jQuery to the to a browser and then it looks like about another um, quarter second for it to serve. So in other words, let's see if I can explain how this what this is telling you. Um, this is saying that it took this green line here is saying how long it took so from 0.5 to um, 7.2 which is roughly what 6.8 ish seconds something like that just for um, the guts of the web server which includes the web server the file system the memory system the WordPress um, configuration the how well your database is working underneath it took s almost seven seconds just for the website to figure out where the jQuery file lived which if you remember when we looked at that this file is coming from a cache so my my guess would be I'm gonna serve this exact same file off my website and here's what it looks like uh, jQuery 1.83 minified uh, it took from 0.15 to 0.18 so it took um, roughly 1.4 milliseconds to um, both locate that and serve it so in other words the location if you look at these lines let's let's look at these lines side by side because this this graph tells you a tremendous amount about your site. Um, this green line on, on Ezra's wife's server, on Carrie's server, it took six and a half seconds just to figure out what file to serve. In other words, where does that file physically live so that I can send the first byte down the pipe to the browser? On my site, it only took, um, you know, it looks like from we'll say 0.25 so it took 0 0.10 one tenth of, of one second and here it took almost seven seconds now and if we look at the the total amount of time about 1.15 milliseconds 1 .15, eh, roughly the same time to actually serve the file so the time this the biggest time here is the time it took to find the file and my guess is that that is because Ezra is running the um, I think it's 9.2.6.8 of W3C the uh, W3 total cache now ask me how the heck I know that specific version number in my head because that is the single most um, sucky web caching piece of software available is W3 Total Cache up to that version, which that version, it hasn't been changed for three or four years. Now we're going to go check in a minute and see what he's using. 
my guess if he just my guess is if he just disabled the cache, so we'll put that as uh, item number five, is to disable W3C and retest to see if um, this uh, green line here goes down from seven seconds to, you know, it should go down to like, you know, it should, we should be done about this one second mark is the correct, the correct, uh, uh, activity here uh, anyway so that's uh, that's just completely bizarre uh, so let's see I'm gonna put that as a um, check for w3c because Ezra gave me his um, site login information here um, okay what's next um, oh all these EOT files web font EOT what all these all these EOT files, uh, change those to be uh, Google fonts instead of whatever these are. And the reason for that is that if you access Google fonts, you'll still have to download the EOT file. E An EOT file is basically uh, a vector description of the math it, that's required to draw a font on a person's screen. <clears throat> and so if you use uh, Google fonts, as more and more people use Google fonts, the likelihood is that your customer accessing your website has already accessed a website someplace that is using that same Google font and it'll already be cached or there'll be a copy in your client's browser so when uh, one of your clients visits your website if they've already visited a website that has the uh, Google font loaded into their browser basically then uh, all these uh, EOT references here like this one is um, 300 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds. So we're up over a second just for these three files. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you're using a, a Google font that is fairly wide in fairly wide use, then all those times will be zero. So that is item six is to change from custom fonts to Google API fonts. All right, uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, now the next thing is, uh, if you notice all these, uh, the majority of all the objects here listed are uh, JPEG and ping. And there's one GIF, <clears throat> and the ICO file is fine. Um, which, by the way, you must have an ICO file. This little file here, which is just a—it's the file that shows up where this. See this um, this little file folder thing up here, where my uh, web pointer is. Uh, that little graphic, that ICO file. Be sure you have that on your website, even if you go and. Um, um, log in with Secure say, uh, Shell and say touch favicon.ico or you know just do that on your um, however you publish your sites. Basically, either have that icon in, on your site or have a zero length file there because what happens is if you've got that icon file missing, every single page request from a browser to your site will look for that file. So you'll have an additional page request that will always time out. Uh, like, like one of these red lines because the file doesn't exist which will just suck a person's website down to its knees so um, uh, make sure you've always got your uh, fave icon uh, file there all right let's see uh, so regarding all these images um, uh, you can look um, let's see I found a couple of links here uh, if you look, if you search for W3 School, uh, well, here's the link, w3schools.com, um, W3 uh, CSS, CSS underbar image, underbar sprites.asp. You can just search for image sprites, uh, W3 Schools, and find this page. This basically tells you what sprites are. The simple explanation is that what a sprite is, is instead of having individual images, you take all your images and 
concatenate them one after another into a single image file. So instead of having, um, you know, how many, however many files are here, it looks like about, you know, roughly almost 40 files. Yep, over 40 files are image files. So what you do is you go to the few files that are ping images and convert them to JPEGs. And then you uh, use uh, something like, if you search for um, compass, spriting, if you search with the string spriting with compass, you'll find this web page. You don't have to understand this, just um, uh, know that that uh, tool is there so that what you can do is you can uh, point that tool at a set of images and it will create all the CSS information and the single uh, image that you require for your um, uh, site so that you load the CSS file and the single image file onto, onto your site. So instead of having 40 objects here, now you only have one to send down the pipe. Um, and that will dramatically affect the speed of this site because see each one of these images when your browser goes after one, in other words, it has to finish this one before it gets this one, before it gets this one. And so if you look at all these, these are all stair-stepped. So basically they're having to wait for one of the other images to finish before the next one can start. So if you have all those images in one image file, there is none of that start and stopping nonsense, uh, and which takes a tremendous amount of um, uh, time. So that's... Um, Spriteify uh, images. And then also the other thing is a lot of these images have to do with um, they have to do with the um, styling of the site. So let's bring the site up and I'll show you what I mean. Like see this bar here of uh, with this gradient there are a lot of images used to build this and this can all be done at all in CSS so that's another thing to do is to make sure and uh, convert uh, convert uh, styling images to pure CSS and let's see so that's uh, the navigation items uh, theme images we've talked about the speeding up the www to bear domain redirect okay last thing here is we are going to take a look at where's the file this little piggy head roast beats do, 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 do. Bring us up another window here and minify these windows. And what we're going to do is, whoops, this little piggy head roast. Well, did the wrong thing here. We're going to go to the W3 validator and we're going to validate the HTML of this page. And I went over all this in the detail video that follows this that's about an hour long. Rule of thumb is you should have zero errors always. And the only warning you should have is, for example, like if you look at my website here, I think this one uses uh, HTML. So the all, you should have, if you're using HTML5, you'll see this one warning here that says using experimental feature HTML5 conformance checker. So if you're using uh, XML uh, 1. or XHTML 1.0 strict as your doc type, which is um, a type of HTML, you should have zero errors, zero warnings. If you're using the HTML5 doc type, you should have zero errors and one warning for the conformance check uh, feature being used. And also, um, so we won't be able to check the CSS, but um, where is Jigsaw? 
So here's the CSS validator. Normally, if you have a, a document that validates, you can just check the CSS right on the page. But since that had all sorts of errors, you have to fix that. Now I go into uh, detail about how to fix all these um, errors in the, the longer video. The, the simple uh, part of it is, uh, let's see, fix HTML errors is the next item on here. And the next item is fix CSS errors using modernizer. Most of these errors um, look to be related to, again, that goofy header stuff that uh, is being done by the theme. Like you see all these like gradient stuff, like Moz linear gradient and WebKit gradient. All that is bad CSS. It should never, ever, ever be used because those are what are called vendor prefixes. So, uh, in other words, there's a different syntax for doing gradients in uh, Microsoft that uses this nonsense here. And then there's the nonsense that happens in Chrome and Safari, which is the WebKit cruft. And then you've got the Firefox and Mozilla cruft here. Um, which is that dash MOZ. So basically um, what you require to do is use, um, if you go to modernizer.com, which is um, modern, uh, it's uh, modernizer without the E before the R, modernizer. Um, and what modernizer is, is a little piece of JavaScript that you include in the top of your um, programs or your web pages, and then you use a simple syntax which tells Modernizer what type of features you're using. For example, you tell Modernizer that you're using um, uh, HTML or you're using CSS3 gradient syntax. And then what Modernizer will do is it'll check your web browser to see if that feature is implemented in your web browser, and if it will, it does nothing. If that feature is not implemented in your web browser, then Modernizer will figure out how to implement it, which is just slick as all get out. It will figure out based on your web browser, which includes your platform like, you know, Linux, Solaris, um, BSD, um, Microsoft, uh, Mac OS. It'll take your operating system and also your platform architecture like, um, um, if it's RISC or uh, Intel x86 type of architecture or, or um, PPC power power um, PC architecture, and it will figure out based on the specific browser you have what it has to hack in your browser to make all the gradient syntax work, which might mean adding uh, JavaScript uh, into your page. It might mean adding uh, CSS into your page. Whatever is required. Modernizer will fix it for you. So that means that you can get rid of all this, um, all these errors here, which is really complicated because 173 errors. How will you even know if there's a real error here? Most of these errors appear to be um, have to do with uh, uh, vendor-specific um, CSS prefixes, but who knows? I mean, I, I, I would be unwilling to go and try to figure out all this nonsense. Oh, here's another piece of nonsense. This is some kind of what's called a uh, hack to fix a problem in uh, Internet Explorer 6 through 9. Uh, Modernizer just does all those hacks for you. Yeah, so I, I mean, there's no way I could even begin to, I mean, it freaking take me days to figure this out. Um, so here's the other thing. If you're paying for web services uh, for uh, HTML or CSS work, you could you should make your payment contingent on uh, zero errors and warnings for both your HTML or CSS, with the one exception being a warning if it's um, uh, HTML5 uh, syntax. Uh, so let's see. So that gets the uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, vendor prefixes, and I believe that's it. And so let's just, uh, just for grins, go back and look at, um, if we fix all those errors, 
I'm just looking, I'm just um, doing the math in my head here. It looks like that the speed of this site would drop to about um, uh, 0.8 to 1.2 seconds for the first page and then something like 0 0.03 and a, a, a 0 0.3, so 300 milliseconds for uh, second and subsequent visits. So if all these things get fixed, then um, uh, Ezra will have for this website uh, the you know the target of a sub second first page and subsequent pages. Well, let's check one other thing here, which was the um, uh, the um, plugin to see. Well, let, let me just log into his site right quick. Okay, so here's the site, and let's uh, log into the back end. And we're going to go to plugins and see if there's um, specifically if there's uh, anything we can do. Let's just check to see what updates. Um. You have the latest version of WordPress. That's good. And updates. Oh, there isn't. Oh. And I don't know if I said the right version before, but the 0928 version of, of uh, W3Cache was the one that just uh, sucked websites speed down to the ground. So up until about version 3.1 of WordPress, W3 Total Cache was stellar. And the reason for that was that WordPress was so badly broken internally that uh, W3 Total Cache remediated the slow speed of the Word, WordPress sites just like using a CDN remediates slow sites. So once WordPress actually fixed the root cause of the problem, installing W3 Total Cache on systems after that uh, would uh, dramatically reduce performance instead of in, uh, increase it. Now notice what I said. Anything after about 3.1 of WordPress, if you have W3 Total Cache running, more than likely your site is, is being slowed down instead of speeded up. Now it does say that there's an update here. Let's see what the update details say. Uh, mm, doesn't look good. Um, so here's the thing about W3 Total Cache and what I would uh, test. Uh, this is the, the having this on his, on this site is probably the reason that uh, jQuery um, JavaScript file was serving so slow. The first thing I would do is I would turn off W3 Total Cache and retest the site with uh, uh, webpagetest.org and see if the site, uh, the serving speed for that object increased. If it did, I would leave W3 Total Cache out. There is a, um, I've tested a whole bunch of different um, caching plugins and, you know, de depending on your exact web server configuration and the type of content you're serving different types of plugins will have different effects on your site so it's a little bit challenging to say just in general and there is one um, there is one specific WordPress plugin that um, Across the board, every time I've installed on a site, it's dramatically increased the performance. And this is uh, post 3.1, which, by the way, please update to WordPress 3.5.1. Uh, I won't even do any work for any WordPress site that's below the latest version. It's just too much problem. Um, once you update to the latest version of WordPress, though, and you install this special plugin, um, the site speed usually goes up dramatically, even for an optimized site like the ones I do. And rather than telling you what that plugin is, um, here's what I'll do. This will be reviewware. I will tell you, because it took me probably three or four days of testing. So this is the payment that you're going to make for my three or four days of testing, unless you'd like to do it yourself. If you'd like to, go for it. Um, or you can go to davidfavor.com slash bb uh, and uh, buy a copy of my beautiful business book. Uh, no, you can't get it from Kindle Lending Library. Um, buy it. 
It, so you're paying 10 bucks for four days of consulting. I'd say that's a pretty darn good, um, um, that's a pretty good uh, investment. And uh, scan the table of contents and click on the table of contents and go to the chapter that, some chapter that stands out to you and read that chapter. They're really short chapters. And then go make an Amazon review and say the date, like um, today would be 2013-04-26 colon space uh, chapter 32 meetup and carriage return, carriage return and write a review uh, and I don't care what the quality of the review is if, uh, if you think the book sucks that's great uh, if you think the, that it's good that you know give a four or five star review so basically uh, swap me a review uh, once you've made a review, you can go join my meetup group, which is insidetrackparty.com slash tribe. Again, insidetrackparty.com slash tribe. And message me in there. Send me a message through meetup. And the reason for that is that, that uh, messages I get from meetup go past all my spam filters because I know that those are real people. And message me and say, gee, David, I just put up a five-star review and send me a link to your review or the title of your review and I'll go check and once I've verified you got the review I will send you a link to this little piece of software that is just the the coolest caching software and I everyone I've talked to that's uh, in I've installed on their site or they've installed it on my recommendation has made a tremendous uh, increase in speed performance um, and uh, even if you search inside of wordpress.org a lot of times you this plugin never turns up in the searches for uh, caching software. I don't know what the deal is, but it, I just happened across it doing some other random search and it just makes a huge um, a bit of difference. Uh, so um, there you have it. There's a review of the of the um, uh, the uh, site speed up for this site, which most of the site speed up I think can be done uh, at the content level. Now, if Ezra would like to go one step farther and start implementing all the the checklist for the operating system uh, optimizations on um, uh, crazyfastwebsites.com, uh, then that that's a whole other conversation. And usually that takes about um, an hour or two to do, and it's the the residue of uh, 20 or 30 years of uh, research I've done. So I usually charge a you know, a pretty stiff um, consulting fee to actually uh, put all those checks in and test them. Uh, so that that would be the next step if you'd like to take this up to the next level. And I think if he just goes through and makes these uh, 10 item checklists here in, in the summary video that he'll end up with sub-second uh, speed performance on this site and that will be um, uh, adequate for uh, rolling out the site. <laughs>